Hello and welcome to Bounding, a podcast about being flexible in all of the ways that means. Thanks for joining us. My name is Andy Young and I'm one of... Oh no. Ah! (laughs) I'm one of your fortunate, accomplished hosts. Joining me as always is our other fortunate and accomplished host, Beth Martin. Beth, the pleasure as always. What's the... (laughs) Like accomplished, not today, buddy. (laughs) Not today? And I, I, I refuse to take it, do a second take. I'm one take on me, as we know. Even if, even if I fluff the first take, that's ticky cat. Even right? if you fluff. <laughs> I think that's like the first time you've ever fluffed a take. I, I think fluff that badly. I sometimes stumble over words, but that's definitely the, the, the first like complete brain fart. Yeah, where we were like, ooh, like someone's Ugh. like just got kicked in the what we call the jelly beans in the nerds. In this family, the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> With kids, it's like, what do we call them? You know, and yeah. it's school or at camp or something. Charlie was like, Charlie was like, we call them jelly beans, and I was like, I kind of like that. Yeah, jelly beans is nice. Yeah, yeah but it, yeah. it kind of undersells the uh, the impact, <laughs> right? And kicked on the jelly beans. Yeah, but, well, maybe it's different when you're seven. Well, that's true. That's a good point. I don't. Really I don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Ha- I don't know. These are things that. I will never know nor understand. So you got no frame of reference. No. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, yeah, no, not really. They're overrated, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> what a headline for the show, right? Not uh-huh. overrated, guys. So, um, I have to just so the episodes that we did on The Simpsons. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh. I'm already going off topic. Uh, and just Before. blabbing about whatever we want to talk about. So. Like, we watched maybe the first five episodes, like, a month ago or whatever with the kids, Uh and they thought it was hilarious. And it's so interesting watching this cartoon become part of their lexicon. Ooh, interesting. It happened. It's like, it's a phenomenon that I've never seen before. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So, um, the phrase in the house is never put your arm out of, or... Yeah, never put your arm out of the school bus window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, right? So, in the episode, like, they're going on a school field trip. I can't remember where, even though I just watched the episode. Um, and that's kind of the way The Simpsons is. It's like, you don't necessarily remember what it's about, but you remember the sayings that come out of it. And uh, yeah. Mrs. Krabappel is like, never put your arm out of the school bus window. And then later on, they're at, like, the Army Surplus store. And the guy's there to help him, and he's got his arm pinned up, and Bert's like, how'd you lose your arm? And he's like, never stick your arm out of the school bus window, kid. And um, they were like, the kids were dying. So, yeah. like, we were, so, yeah, we just got back from a um, fr- uh, French Polynesia trip. We were gone for two and a half weeks. Mm-hmm. And, like, we were taking the kids out on the boat a bunch, and, like, they're putting their hands in the ocean, and they're like, never put your arm out of the school bus window. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm doing so good as a parent. Amazing. I know. <laughs> That's a great thing to be drawn from, honestly. Like I uh, know, uh, I know. And Mike's uh, going out of town tonight for like a week and a half. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's my plan is to watch the, yeah, the Simpsons. Simpsons and then the Ryan Reynolds is like Wrexham documentary about soccer. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you watched that? No. Okay. I... <laughs> but football, sorry. Yeah, exactly. It's football. I'm not. I'm not a football guy, and I, I, I find that whole thing, Ooh. I know, that's going to get me a lot of um, complaints. I'm not really a sports guy, to be perfectly honest with yeah, you. Yeah, we call like, it sport ball in this sport household. Sport ball, exactly, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, like, I had a passing interest in, like, basketball in the 90s, which I think we've touched on before. Well, yeah, yep. It's actually going to come up with something that, it, that had made me think about this episode, actually, was, <laughs> uh, uh, or this episode uh, idea was basketball-related. But, like, I, I've never... They just have never kind of got their their grip grip into me at all. Any sports? No, it, it it's like a phase thing for me yeah. too. It's like okay, like yeah, like when basketball was, I don't know. It's like it was the dream team, you know. Yeah, going to the Olympics. It's... Oh, so so we were we were in French Polynesia oh, for yeah. for the Olympics. Not we mm-hmm. didn't go, but like we we're sure. on the same island, and it's not a very big island, so we could have driven down, but. It's like the big Tahitian wave, and I'm depending on how you pronounce it. In Ch- it's uh, Chopu or Teopu'u. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, everyone. Um, 
but you have to like take boats out there. It's like way, way the fuck out there. So there's no way like we would have been able to see any of the action. But like everyone was watching and like um, one of the Tahitians won a, won a medal. And so they were super excited. Freaking out. Yeah. I like I was like tangentially. I was like <laughs> probably the most, you know, uh, removed way you can absorb Olympics in that I was enjoying the memes. But like, yeah, man. That, <laughs> Holy like, shit! The 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 the, the pistol uh, memes were fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the and, great dance and, and stuff. I feel, I feel. Yeah, the pistol guy. That was like, that was Legendary. great. The break dancing thing is breaking my heart. I, I agree. Yeah, I don't. Like, I, I really was like, ugh. this feels all really harsh. I also love her, 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 her like dance hip hop uh, hip hop dancer. Hold on, break dancer name Raygun. Raygun is fantastic. It's really yeah. good. I, yeah, it, it, she really got too much shit for that, and it really made me, made me feel pretty bad, because it was like, eh, she's having a good time, she's putting herself out there, don't fucking uh, be an asshole. I'm not know. gonna lie, though, I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. Like, I'm, I tried, like, because I was, we didn't have internet, really, uh, so, like, just trying to, like, watch it, finally, and, yeah. like, the Olympics has been taking the videos down so you can't really it's like hard to find oh interesting now mm -hmm. so i finally watched it and like i didn't there's so much i don't know about break i don't know anything about break dancing right yeah um but it's super cool and um i'd like to know more about it but like i didn't know like the point the point system i don't like it doesn't exist in real life and like the way that they set it up like the battles and how to how to score yeah. and you know basically they allowed break dancing to happen this time but they were like but we're never gonna allow it again That's so like i know so it was like it had nothing to do with her yeah uh but they're making it be like this was our one chance to show like how how great the, of a sport this actually is yeah. and you know it's, blah 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 you know, blah it's something I heard a compelling argument and, and it goes along with the theme of one of our other episodes for like making wrestling an Olympic event because like, you, you know, essentially when you boil down to, you know, the root of what wrestling is, it is a like organized movement between two people. Do you know what I mean? So it's not dissimilar from like figure skating or mm-hmm. break dancing. You could point score them depending on how they perform their kind of routine, you know. I and also it's... think like stunt stunting. Yes, like in films, mm-hmm. and that's a that is yeah, like anything you're like doing something intense with your body, yeah, that's like viewable on like public television. <laughs> oh, that would rule! Actually, just like guys doing stunts and getting rated on them, yeah, I like yeah. that, taking a big ass fall and really, like one of those inflatables, yeah, I like that. Okay. Or like, yeah, you know, okay, I'm gonna jump off like a thirty story building under one of the big giant yeah. pillows. Like, I want to see that. I would. Yeah. Who, that who would be fucking best? right, right. Yeah. Huh. Oh, okay. Here we go. Right. Beth and Everyone, I really you're welcome, Olympics. world. There's there's your big idea. It's in LA. Uh we we invaded we invaded in LA and Thank you, Tom Cruise, <laughs> for telling us where the Olympics is gonna be. Oh yeah, thanks for years. <laughs> and we insist that they, they uh have a stunt co- a stunt competition. If you wanna come <laughs> for that. Uh, yeah, I mean I might. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, it's gonna maybe. be right here. Yeah. You should probably maybe. do it. All right. Who knows where I'll be in twenty twenty eight? Uh, <laughs> or what my life will look like then but yeah let's pencil it in anyway um okay wait okay right so what's the crack with you uh okay so the trials and tribulations of dog setting it's the, dog, <laughs> the saga continues oh. it's been it's been you know up and down there have been some nice experiences there have been some less chill experiences and i uh you know it's fine it, but it has you know, kept me fairly, uh, not doing a load as a result. Lots of cinema trips, which has been fine, um, but nothing too ex- terribly exciting. I had a friend um, who's currently living in... So he is <laughs> splitting his life between Colombia and Ecuador currently. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he, he's teaching... So he's a, dr- a drug drug lord? Shh. Drug mule? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll never tell. Um <laughs> But he's doing he's doing like online English teaching essentially, so he can do it anywhere. It's just oh yeah, that, that's like, awesome. 
he's only allowed to spend six months of the of the year in each of those places. So, um, he's just kind of like enjoying the life he's in there. Teaching English. Yeah. So he's doing like one on one um classes over Zoom, basically. So fun. Yeah, I mean, it's I'd like, be like, this is how you say fuck. This is how you say <laughs> shit. This is how... <laughs> that would. <clears throat> It's what I'm doing with my children. It's working great. Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> once you get like I think like he he does have a lot of adult students, so they probably do want to learn stuff like that like eventually, you know. But I mean, it's it's you know it was appealing. It was an interesting conversation. Um, the other thing that I've done is so since we last spoke, so there has been a bit of time. Beth's been away. Um, the UK has had a series of let's call them anti-immigration yeah marches. Um, yeah, it's so bad. That Banksy did another set of oh yeah Animal. tags yeah he did and he was mm-hmm. like I just want to make people smile because ch- shit's fucked right now it's and true. I'm like if he's if he's not calling people out and he's just like look at something funny and nice I mean and fair play to him because it did need to happen and in fairness things have died down now but like I was feeling but it just didn't make me feel great I'm also currently reading like a a Noam Chomsky book. And mm. it is a fairly brutal criticism of like the world since like the post war sort of uh, world. Mm-hmm. And it's, it doesn't create good headspace for me. It's very interesting, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it doesn't, that and also seeing the real life kind of rats wasn't a great headspace for me. So I went, a friend and I went to an anti immigration, or sorry, whoa, whoa. <laughs> A pro-immigration, whoa, whoa, let's cut that bit, I need to cut that bit, uh, a pro-immigration march in Belfast. Um, and what was incredible about it, we went up, they did some They did some talks, um, and they said at the time, uh, so like two talks in, they were like, uh, currently we just had numbers of the amount of people that are here, and there was 15,000 people that were there, which is fantastic, wow. because all the kind of anti-immigration marches had been far lower than that i think hundreds rather than thousands you know so it was very heartening to see that many people turn out and it also just kind of like filled my cup a wee bit because i was feeling a bit like depleted with all the other kind of nastiness that was going on so Mm -hmm. yeah it was good i'm still reading that bloody noam chomsky book though and it's depressing the shit out of me but it's very interesting (laughs) but you know yeah these things balance out you know they do so so yeah Uh, it's funny we have a uh I'm not going to say which one, but there. if anyone wants to Google this shit, there's a presidential uh, vice president candidate that is actually, there's a quote of him blaming our immigration problem on the Irish. Oh, really? Yeah. Amazing. I love it. <laughs> wow. I, yeah. That's a, I, and I was just I'm like, sure. really? Like, let's check your heritage, oh, human. I'm person. sure that's a tortured... Uh, um, can't uh, even example analogy i'll have to check that out that sounds fun i can't like i can't i can't even i can't oh, even God. right now just what stay a, off the internet people what a cool what a cool what a cool uh political environment we're all living in currently. i know i know it's so great it's so great it's the best but hey we can look on the bright side there are like-minded people out there one of the speakers at the uh pro-immigration march um, was very was like um you know uh, he's like, I'm so I'm so happy you're all out here today. Good on you. And you know what? Congratulations on having excellent parents that raised you this way. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. They did. Um, so it was nice. And it, and, and it was just, and it was, as I say, it's always nice in the face of all the kind of horrible stuff to see that there are, are so many people who are thinking the same way that you're thinking, you know, mm-hmm. so it was very nice. It's interesting like because of covid uh there was a lot obviously going on during that time in our political sphere and a lot of protests were happening for various reasons that i'm not going to get into and yep. i had that that opportunity to go to some marches mm-hmm. but because of where i live what country i live in i was like i'm i would be worried that someone would have a gun yeah yeah that's a big concern yeah or yeah. try and you know drive their car into the crowd or yeah. whatever and it's like i'm um if i didn't have children that i would be like all over the place but like yeah i i have 
my pri- first priority is definitely to my kids. 100%. So um, I'm proud of you for going. And I Thanks. am also like grateful that you live in a place that <laughs> you're probably not going to get shot if you attend. <laughs> Which is so, yeah, it's such a relief. It truly is. It really is. It's, it's, it's something that I think people really take for granted here. <laughs> That's kind of like wild. It's yeah. Such a, yeah, it really is. It was yeah. weird. It was weird to bring it back to me. Like That's quite right. being out of the country for a couple of weeks was great because our political climate is, um, it's been a lot recently. Yeah. And it was just nice to be away from it all and to not have really access to information. And then we like fly back to the LAX airport and like, I don't know, it probably gets shut down a couple times a year because someone shows up with a gun. And I had that thought, like we're all like trying to get our bags and we're waiting for the bus. And I'm like, Oh my God, the longer we stand here, like the more likely someone's going to show up with a gun and like, and then I'm like, if they do that, then it's going to, they're going to shut it down. And then we're not going to be able to get to our car. And like, da, da, da. and like, these are the things I'm thinking as I'm just trying to get home with our, our family. So it's like, it works its way into like your everything, everything process. Yeah. So sucks. I'm sorry. Sad. I'm really, I know. Yeah. I know. I'm totally like making it fun. Today. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, here, no, it's, it's, it, I, hey, like, I started it in fairness with me accidentally saying I was going to an anti immigration. You sure did. <laughs> but it's fine. Well, yeah. we corrected it. We've moved past it. Right? Nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody thinks that's the case anymore, right? Uh, okay, so do we have, before we move on to our topic today, do we have, do you have any what's occurring? I, did we had, I didn't write it down, but we had a really nice, uh, compliment from someone basically along the lines of like we're awesome and um you know they it it was just really nice and it's nice nice. we've had a couple actually so thank you for people to people i just want to thank people for letting us know we're we're doing a good job and you're enjoying what you're hearing and the feedback is always appreciated so it really is it truly is Um, and i'm sorry i've not updated the website but i've again no internet so, uh, I'll get to it today, probably. Um, I have a question, actually, because somebody asked me this when you were away, and I didn't yeah. want to bother, bother you, was that, do you have a preferred way for people to contact you? No. Okay, cool, perfect. Because he, he's just been sending you messages, uh, he's been like, commenting on like Facebook posts and things like that, mm-hmm. and I said that's probably as good a way as any. Um, but he was like, one of my friends in particular was taught, so it was a few different things, he really loved the books episode because... Um, he used to really get to chat about books and things like that. Um, and he was he, 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 he put a lot of comments about books that were really meaningful to him on um, the episode, uh, the book episode that was posted uh, a week or so ago. Um, but he was also, uh, we were texting back and forth a bit about the horror episode. And he was saying how chilled he was by the lady in Certain Man of Three, the kind of robot lady. And, and the, what, sorry, which say it again? So, well, I was. I think I was saying. I said to you uh, to, uh, in Superman three, which is the Richard Pryor one. Yes. This lady gets sucked into a machine and gets turned yes. into like a robot thing. Yes. And how, as a child, that scarred me. That and uh, Ghostbusters. Um, and he was like ch- chilled to the bone by that. I rewatched the clip as a result. Still terrifying. Really? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. There's something like because the, the the she gets covered in metal, which is scary enough. I remember being scared about the thought of that happening to me but her eyes are also like metallic it's just a very a very freaky look it really is so yeah good to know i would uh, would you entertain the idea of some if we have someone that's like super into i have i need to go and read facebook comments i haven't done that yet yeah. but um i'll do that this afternoon but like if someone's really into a, a convert like wants to have a conversation we could do that I, we could do like want. a sh- yeah yeah absolutely i would be up for it yeah because yeah. like that would yeah i'm down let's do it so yeah if, if people yeah if people do have any if, if if people do want to have any things they like topics they want to they actually want to talk to us about mm-hmm. yeah we definitely mm-hmm. be something we can cons- consider yeah so yeah and and we vet you and we like and we and we yeah we yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you have to, you have to be, be cool yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i mean i like, guess this is not a auto invite <laughs> like to calm yourself down. Uh, but yeah we well, certainly something we consider yeah yeah okay i like that okay um yeah, so um, 
maybe it's time to move on to today's topic. Um, so I say I think today's topic is called Big Success with a exclamation mark at the end of it. Beth, <laughs> I haven't run this by ours yet. Does that sound okay? It sounds awesome. Okay, perfect. So I love, I love, lo- I, you know this about me. I love exclamation points. Yeah, right. So I mean, they should be Ooh, everywhere. So this is like perfect. literally. They're uh, more. The more, the better. Okay, let's have maybe two exclamation marks. We we can we can we, we can talk three? about this afterwards. Okay. Yeah, okay. three. Okay. Um, <laughs> so um. Basically, it was one of the things that I have been mulling over. It's one of the things I always kind of like to mull over. And um, tying it back to, uh, uh, I said there was there was something uh, related to basketball that inspired this. Um, I know. I was I rem- curious how you got there. <laughs> so I remember, um, I always I always find it so interesting when there are people who reach the top of their game, who are like renowned as the best in the world. Like how... Whenever you have reached that level of success, are you satisfied? Um, are you not? You know, you know what what does that mean exactly? And I find Michael Jordan to be such an interesting person in that regard because he is undisputably the best basketball. Well, maybe not undisputably, but like I'd say for most people, the best basketball player ever. Um, I mean, yeah, and he's, he's his legacy. Nine. Yeah, his legacy continues. Partly because of Nike and Air Jordans, yes. But um, I think, especially for our generation, like when you think Absolutely. like who's best, I always think of him. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. and like uh, you know, and so like, but I, I remember I found it so interesting. I has just been thinking about this again recently, like him in the Last Dance documentary, which is a fantastic documentary. It's so good. I watched it's it too. So I good. loved it. I loved it. And um, like how he doesn't really feel like he is like it, he doesn't feel sort of fulfilled by it you know what i mean it was just mm-hmm. it's just kind of like a thing it's why he ended up you know trying to then get into baseball for a while that didn't really go very go very well for him and you know so on and so forth it's just such an interesting thing because i find that you know the idea of success or the idea of being successful is so uh, aspirational for so many people do you know what i mean uh, it, yes it, it seems like I don't know. I, I just, I wonder how uh, uh, um, in reaching that people would feel. You know, okay, so I read something the other day about, I guess, like, for, like first of all, like, how do you measure, like, it's the idea of how do you, how do you measure success? Yeah. And I read something the other day. Um, actually, there's two things. That, uh, hold on, I have to take a note. So, real quick before I forget. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so, Andy, mm-hmm. take 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 it. Oh, I'm vamping. Okay, note so space. I um, so like I think that like it's something in my life. I don't think it really bothers me that much, and I I don't think I maybe have a good idea in my life of successes I've had. I feel like I I am a person people need to go, Andy. That was quite good. That thing that you were involved with, and I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right. it's never been I've I it's being you know the idea of being successful or, or even like success and things that I have done has always been um kind of off to one side for me rather than being the focus you know mm-hmm. um so I okay, thought another it, I reason thought about I was thinking it. about this yeah no go ahead um uh, that that's sorry that was kind of the end of the thought really um so so I'm gonna just tag onto that and then I'll go to my two things that just that brought up for me but I don't think of things as ever being really finished yeah so it's more of like a temperature check like how are things now in this moment with whatever thing I'm working on and then like I I adjust as needed yeah so it's almost like I don't think of success as like a box that you check or like I'm I reached like I'm you know I did this check it off the list or I'm the yep. best at this, check it off the list. It's definitely, I think more of a fluid thing for me. Yeah. And like, uh, so I also, this is random, but Dexter Holland of the band, the offspring. Uh huh. This is random. He is, 
so he's he's a he's he's in the band The Offspring. Yeah. He's also uh, as of as because of this trajectory, like he started with math and was super into math and was like, oh, I also like music, and so like to, for him, those two things were like a language that he could speak. Mm-hmm. Um, he also founded a record label. He is a creator of a hot sauce called Gringo Bandito, and he holds a PhD in molecular biology. <laughs> that uh, he was so yeah, he was the valedictorian of his high school class. Um, super smart. He got his uh, PhD in 2017. So wow. like, he's definitely like kind of one of those people where he focuses on something that he's really really into, and then like follows it through. Love it. And, and like utilize like utilizes like not only follows through but like it's something that he can keep working on f- for the rest of his life kind of thing yeah and like I was so impressed with that like That's you're not just thing. you're not just in a band like you're all these other things and I was like you know then you look at your own life and you're like okay well I don't have a hot side. I got a record company I got you know uh, like what yeah. am I got what do we got here so I think like and then also, okay, this is another random thing, but um, I was reading an article, I think in Vanity Fair with George Clooney and Brad Pitt um, mm-hmm. that just came out. And George Clooney was talking about um, he got wounded really badly in a movie. Um, this was probably a decade ago. Yeah. And he was like having like spinal fluid leaking out of him, like massive migraines and like on all the Vicodin and his doctor was basically like, you need, like if you were in this amount of pain when you were born, you wouldn't know any differently. So you would just assume that this is how you felt all the time. So you mm. need to like basically like reestablish your relationship with pain. But he's like, but you can do that with everything in your life. Right. Hi, and I was like, oh, like these little like mushroom cloud in my brain goes off and I'm like, wow, that's awesome and like how would you then relate that to success and then you were like hey i think we should do this thing on success and i'm like i have all these things that i'm reading about like that totally tie into the topic yeah so then i was thinking like how did you define success 10 years ago me personally yeah uh yeah uh that's a good question i think that I, I maybe even take it further back. Like, I think... I no. Feel like, what? <laughs> I... Because, like, I feel like my need drive for that or my need for that, you know, to be successful has really kind of diminished as I've kind of gotten older. But, like, I feel like I thought that <clears throat> to be successful, I would be, like, have a well-paid job. I would have a relationship. I would probably have a family. You know, maybe kids or whatever. Um... But I don't know that that was ever something that I really wanted, you know? It just felt like that that was the course that you should go on. And, like, I have been in the position of having a well-paid job, a good, well-regarded, well-paid job, being engaged and going, I'm not happy. Like, this doesn't, this isn't satisfying me in any major way. Um, And I think... You know, seeing it from, you know, inside of that really kind of gave me more of a perspective in terms of what I uh, want, I guess, or what I kind of need, you know. Um, So I think, you know, very much going back, it was a more traditional life. Um, But again, I think that was just something that I was kind of told that I should want rather than it being anything I really wanted, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if some of it is just like age and not knowing what the fuck, like your, your yeah. path is supposed to be. So you just kind of like, you know, like you go to college, you get a job, you start a family. It's like the thing that yeah. you, the path that you follow. And I always find it to be really admirable when people go their own way and like, yeah stand up for what they want and let things go that aren't working for them, even if it means blowing up their lives, you know? Yeah. And like, like I would say like, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, like I was very external about my success, like what my job was meant a lot, like how many hours I worked more than you mattered and like who I worked with and where I worked and, where I was traveling, what hobbies, and, like, it was very, like, sharing all my shit on social media, and, like, it, 
that I think part of it maybe had to do with the invention of social media. Yes. So I was definitely living my life more externally for other people, probably. Absolutely. And like, that's yeah. now, like, how do you find define success for yourself? I think, like, I mean, it's certainly, I guess, you know, I'm always striving to find like happiness or like a equilibrium within myself that allows me to like be happy more often, probably because like, I think happiness is, you know, a really kind of ephemeral goal. I don't think it's something that anybody really reaches, you know? Um, so I, uh, that's kind of, it's, it's more things within myself. Uh, and you know, it's like what we always go back to in this podcast and we always touch on because it's obviously so important to both of us, but like yoga has been so valuable in terms of, uh, I, you know, you're talking earlier about success oftentimes is con concerned with this end goal. You know, what if I get this job what if i you know whatever what if i you know get this do well in this sporting event or whatnot but like it's more it's much more about the path because really the kind of end goal it's so often just isn't really satisfying you'll maybe get like five minutes if you're lucky of like a nice sort of like uh, you know, endorphin hit of being like woohoo i'm so happy this is great and then you crash out right? and it's just like you still need to go back with the like you know, minutia of like dealing with your life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I would say like I define success now with like a feeling I get in my body. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. Like it's just like, I'll have a moment and I'll be like, this is, this is cool. Or like, wow, I feel at peace right now. Or like yeah. I'm okay with this thing happening and like whereas like six months ago it might have been like a huge trigger or upset me and like look at me I'm not yeah. upset or in like that like even th little thing like I guess I'm finding I success small in the, the yeah. smaller things um, yeah. a lot more than working on a film shoot right <clears throat> yeah so I also think like not shouting about it and granted like I was posting stuff about my vacation which i'll talk about in a little bit but like something mm -hmm. really cool happened um and that, that's my joy that i'll talk about and like those kinds of things like it's less about like look at this thing that i did that's so cool and more like look at this thing that's happening and like hopefully like I, by me interacting or like doing something someone can learn something from it yeah like that's kind of more of where i think um i'm at um I, so it's gone from like more external success to more internal success yeah i guess i think that's so much healthier to be honest with you and i think i feel like you know certainly from my perspective anyway and that's increasingly the direction i'm heading in as well i i but even in terms of like you know the external values that i see or the external stuff that i see that is useful for me is more small things as well so it's like you know, I, I, if I think about the choir in recent times, like I'm happy that we do shows and everything, but what I love is whenever I see new groups of friends forming because of this thing that I put together, you know, and like these relationships build and it's like, that's, that's to me, what's the best, you know, some of the best stuff about life. Do you know what I mean? So I think that is, 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 is a big a really big success as far as i'm concerned you know because it's like that's the sort of stuff that's important to me and i think it has taken me time to realize that you know mm -hmm. i that's a, like i think both you and i love the concept of like building community yeah and working within community and it's like you know i i guess like even working with the parent teacher association, like I'm like, yeah. I feel like I'm helping and like the events that we have and like, even like just moving within groups of people and like putting things together, it feels good. And I totally understand that. Um, so like currently what things in your life do you deem to be like your most successful? I think that, um, 
in terms of things, this podcast for one, absolutely, mm-hmm. it's a success because like it's, I, you know, I get to spend time with my friend every week. And, Hell well, yeah. Most weeks, unless she's away on holiday, <laughs> selfish. Sorry. <laughs> Whatever, you're going away too. That's true. Uh-huh. Uh, and, um, <laughs> Wanting, one upping each other. <laughs> Fine. And, um, also, like, the choir definitely has given me a big uh, a sense of fulfillment in that regard. I mean, not a big sense of fulfillment, but I definitely feel it's been successful. I'm happy with that. I am, you know, happy that the work that I have put into that has paid off in that regard, you know. Um, I mean, those are the two immediate things that spring to mind. But, like, on smaller scale, like, I I love the relationship I've built with my dog. <laughs> I love it sound like, I, like I, it is a small thing, but it's an important thing. It's you know, huge. I take care of her, you know, I look, I look out for her. And, like, I, I still, all, all and like, I think that, you know, not all aspects of my sort of like uh, uh, relations in my life are per- great, but like in terms of friends, I feel like such a success. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, I feel so successful in that regard, and it's something that is endlessly repays the work that I put into it. Do you know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. it's that's it's such a big deal and continues to be so. You know. Yeah, I would say like to hop onto the yoga train also like I think that has been so Mm. instrumental for my the inner work that I've been able to do yeah um the doors that that open and the you know just the way that I can move through things in a different way with a different perspective um I think my children just like watching them not as a reflection of me at all but like who they are in the world on their like standing on their own two feet makes me proud and happy mm-hmm. um they better be fucking successful because <laughs> <laughs> yeah you need, you need a nice retirement home that's right <laughs> um i would say my closest relationships um have been i'm proud i'm proud of them you yep. know um like i have a friend going through something right now and it's like you know first person they call is me and they're like this big thing is happening and I'm like if if you're calling me it means that you really want this to happen and you know you're gonna do this big thing and you know blow up your life basically and it's like the fact that I'm I can be there for someone in that way makes me really happy um for you know both good and bad and that goes on in people's lives and honestly (laughs) to touch on like our earlier topics like i'm pretty i think my view of the world is pretty successful Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) right Right. okay Uh, okay. all right okay give me some definitions give me some examples sorry of that oh like all right okay sorry yeah, I can't really because oh, I don't so want like, to like, dive guess, into in of, like politics and all of that. Yes, but the way like, I think of the world, yes, like like I was like, both talking about yes, the immigration. Uh, absolutely, no, wait, God yes. damn it! Why did I keep saying the wrong way? <laughs> Our pro-immigration, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those pro-immigration marches. Your anti-stance on anti-immigration. <laughs> Thank you. That's what that's you exactly mean. Exactly right. That's what so I mean. So when you say anti, that's what you mean, I'm right? I'm really revealing oh, myself. That's okay. But like that, I'm. Because I, uh, you got to get clear on this shit right now, right? Yeah. yeah so I'm really pretty did. proud of where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. so what, a, what, what are your uh, areas where you're, you find yourself to be least successful? <laughs> uh, romantically, A number one with a bullet. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm like, I would disagree with that, but mm, yeah, well, perhaps. But like monetarily, not successful at all. Uh, I mean, it's it's fine. I'm getting by, but I need to figure out a better balance with that because I just don't. I just don't. I've never had a good relationship with money. Like I've never been bad with it, but I have never. <clears throat> it has just caused me a lot of like stress. I mean, who? So say we all, right? But yeah. like, it's just I. <clears throat> I've never, uh, like, I know other people who, like, you know, can, like, review their 
statements every month and make sure there's nothing going out and i'm like i don't want to fuck i don't i don't want to go near it i just i just know that i don't spend too much i check my balance occasionally and that's as much of a relationship as i want with that you know um so yeah i i, I guess those things are the immediate stuff that springs to mind like yeah i i mean i think uh and certainly you know <clears throat> the other kind of major one i guess for me would be mental health which is always a mm. tough you know needle to thread i i never really know what even success would, would look like with that you know and like the the goalposts and the kind of um my sort of feelings on it kind of changes all the time anyway so it's it's really kind of it's always a tough one to navigate but i'd say that's another area that i feel not terribly successful in a lot of the time you know mm -hmm. i would say you? my lack of hobbies yeah. bothers me and it's like i look at dexter holland from the offspring and i'm just like <laughs> like i don't follow through as much that's not i mean that's i just wish true. like i wish i had more hobbies that were yeah. like creative yeah um not to say i'm not creative and like this podcast I love yep. it. And like, this is like Absolutely. my version of creativity. Cause I do yep. like, I like being in front of the computer. You know, I like watching my shows. I like yep. reading my books. Um, I like taking the dog for a walk. I like thinking about doing yoga, but not actually doing it. <laughs> right. Like mental, mental yoga. Uh huh. And then like, I've talked to you about this, but m my dad left me. Oh, a dozen or so. Uh huh finished screenplays that are really really good and i haven't been able to get them made into films and that i'm that is an un unsuccess tick mark that i have that i mm -hmm. you know i dabble and here and there and you know push the people that i know every so often um but i would really like to do something with those to yeah. to really fulfill his dream and yeah. mine now yeah um i wrote a book and I did nothing with it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna, I don't think. Yeah. But, like... That's okay. Yeah. And, like, I I sometimes, like, less and less, but my health is still, like, something that... I need to George Clooney it a little bit and just, like, change my perspective of, like, what I think I should be able to do. Like, I told you I got strep throat when I was in French Polynesia mm -hmm. and I got super sick and then I couldn't go underwater because it, like... Anytime I get oh, sick yeah, out, of course. it affects my brain and I just get pissed off and I'm like, your body should be able to do this because it could do this before. And it's like, no, you need to like readjust your dial, girl, yeah. and like give yourself time to heal. You got really sick, like, you know, you, and every time you get sick, it's just going to affect your body differently. Yeah. But like old me is still like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I could, yeah. Yeah. 20 years Fuck, ago yeah right yeah, yeah. and it's like you're uh, gonna yeah. be 45 here and you know a couple months so like wow. start adjusting because you're gonna have to because it's happening it's true <laughs> and now but it's like, not just your health it's age <laughs> yeah no, yay so fun it's you know one of the things and, I, and I, it was um like I, you know part of me in terms of like the big successes and, and you know the people that are like you know renowned for being successful i heard a really fun way of looking at it which was like there was a a, a podcast was talking about arnold schwarzenegger and was talking about all his many successes and he's fascinating being, fellow fascinating fellow and they described him as being the right kind of broken for this world mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'm like that a really mm -hmm. it's just it really kind of says a lot because you know you know because like being really successful in this world which is flawed at a minimum right is not yeah you know it's not always like the be all and end all you know and like i think that oftentimes you know and i think that everybody's broken in some way or another um you know so like the, i love the idea of him just being broken and his 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 the nature of his brokenness just slots into this broken world in kind of a very kind of successful way and i'm like that really such a, a an interesting angle on the nature of success to me you know yeah 
yeah, I read his autobiography. Ooh. And like, you know, he's describing like being in the army and like sleep, like digging a hole under a tank to sleep. What? And like, look at him now. He's like feeding his barnyard animals in his kitchen with his That's grandkids. Nice. And it's just like, and it's, you know, compression <laughs> socks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like he took, I guess it's like you take the pieces, the broken pieces and you do something with them. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And then maybe if you're lucky, you know, the broken pieces match the broken world in the right way. Yes. <laughs> And they're like, oh, the puzzle's solved. <laughs> I, I think that really, to me anyway, says a lot about, you know, the nature of success in this world. I mean, you talk about, like, we, we, you talk, we talked earlier about um, social media and how damaging I think that has been in terms of, like, because it is a fucking massive comparison tool. And, you know, that comparison is the thief of joy. And it truly is, you know, it's hard not to, like, see other people and a, and a very very kind of narrow angle I mean, yeah filtered it's like the, the view fil- into people's lives yes. you know yeah i go oh what an incredible time they're having why is my life not like this and it's like i i know the reality of these things i've been in the other end of that and i've like been sending out photos and people are like oh my god what an amazing time you're having and i'm like you're it, like it was yeah. it was good but like yeah. it was crap sometimes as well but it was good mm-hmm. for the most part you know yeah um it wasn't amazing by any you know so it's it's just it's it's really interesting. I think it's it's one of the uh, more damaging things about sort of modern life in that way. In terms of it's it's hard to not to, hard to not look at these things and, and feel less successful. You know. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I can I ask you? A, a, this is kind of random, but like, mm-hmm. what things happened to you that you thought were unsuccessful, but were actually like. A blessing and turned into a success. Hmm, I'm have to think about that. I, I I know that like I, like you know some of the, one of the things that I was thinking is that in my life I have a handful of times had from managers or places that mm-hmm. I worked basically been told you're a slacker, you're not fucking blah blah blah, and I have proven them wrong on nearly every single occasion when they have actually come back to me either apologize. Or or re or asked for me specifically to do jobs and things like that because they knew you do a good job, and I was kind of like, <laughs> uh, <such a laughs> so slacker. not directly to answer that question, but that is very much a case of like me going, um, well, look, whatever whatever opinion you have of me, you're wrong, and I will prove to you that you're wrong, um, which was uh, quite satisfying, and it's more like, you know, considering my personality and you know what you know of it and other people know of it. It's not super like me, really. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, that's def- definitely the first thing that jumps to mind anyway. Mm-hmm. I would say like, for me, like my health and like having to be on disability mm-hmm. has been the most successful and successful thing because it's allowed me to do things like this. Yeah. And you know, it's allowed me to be available for my children and it's allowed me to just kind of like, I'm still coming out of like workaholic mode, I think. And it's allowing me to just like have time and space to be like, who the fuck? Okay. Like I'm, I'm, I'm clear on who the fuck I am, but now I get to be clear on like, what do I like to do? And that, uh, feels like a success that got born out of something that fucking sucked. Mm hmm. Um, that if you, if I, I, as you were saying, so um, the, the 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 one thing sprung to mind as well as you were talking there in my own life, which was almost certainly my last relationship, which seemed like a catastrophe at the time, but has been has sent my life in a much more positive path and has opened up so many new avenues, so many new friendships that have been wonderful and very much the path that I needed to go down. You know, so like I, it was. Uh, yeah, felt very yeah. unsuccessful at the time. Yeah, but uh, it has made a huge difference in my life. Uh, yeah, um, I yeah, I'm like same train because I was I was thinking like my first marriage uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. when I was like in my early twenties. It was horrible, and like had it not happened, then I wouldn't have like this great life with Mike and like these two 
adorable children who so I true. mostly like. Um, <laughs> depends. So, depends. What, depends right. on the day. Depends on the day. Um, what's something that you wish you were successful at, but it's not going to happen? So I was going to say playing a musical instrument, but I am determined that I will learn a musical instrument before yeah. I die. And uh-huh. I'm going to make that happen. I guess that, I, you know, I, 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 I had always kind of, not I had always, but I always kind of wished I'd had a sport, like when I was younger. I bet it's never going to happen for me. I, I'm not, it's just not, I mean, like obviously I'm, I'm in my 40s now. <laughs> it's unlikely. Like, very few sportsmen start at this age. But like, I don't mind that. But it's 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 very much something that's that's not going to happen for me. Yeah, I said uh, singing. Yeah. Hey, like, Beth. Uh, I I love it, and like, uh, it's yeah. just not going to happen. I refuse to believe that and uh, we're going to have to do the whenever I have. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, yeah. I would do that. Okay. I just All need right. like six or eight drinks and then okay. yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's both, no and then I'm going to hit you with uh, No Rain by Blind Melon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Something you wish you were not successful at. Um, I wish I wasn't so darn likable and so many stupid friends <laughs> i wrote down being so charming <laughs> yeah well so this was people didn't like me so much it's right like, oh. it's the yeah you know get I the know. fuck out of my face you know i know i know <laughs> <laughs> um, um yeah for reals though you are charming and wonderful and all of those things. And you are... I, like, I, you know, like in my sort of more down moments as well, I'm kind of like, oh, for fuck's sake, what is mm-hmm. this person that I like and I want to yes, spend time with but you're me? you're like, I'm like, why? Ugh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I have Jesus, the same thoughts. I guess. And, and like, you know, it, but it's like, you know, it's, you know, what they say, it's nothing. Your thoughts don't define who you are. It's your actions. And like, you know, my actions, you know, are that I spend time with the, these people. I enjoy the time I spend with them. I'm happy that I did. I do. You know, it's just you know. Yeah. Those thoughts. Those thoughts cross my mind sometimes. Same. Um, I will say I was a really good employee. I was really competent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked myself to death, and mm-hmm. like I remember my boss telling me once, and I think I've said this maybe on or off pod, but basically he was like, you know, you're competent. And the more competent you are, the more work you're going to get. Yep. And the more we're going to give to you. And I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. And I was yep. like, yay, and this sucks all at the same time. Like, it's it's like a shit sandwich or something. It, it I don't know. I don't know. But it definitely, like, <laughs> not only did it not necessarily lead me down some good roads for myself, like, at, knowing, like, at my core who I am now with like work life balance or whatever but i think it impacted my health i really do i think oh, i I'm got sure. sick because i was so fucking stressed out and i was in like adrenaline mode all the time and it just cracked me yeah and like if i wasn't so good at jobs and like getting shit done then i don't think that i would have gotten as sick as i did yeah i think you're right yeah yeah so but like, no one it, hire it, me it's or ask such... me to work. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't ask us to work, you motherfuckers. <laughs> um, like, I, you see, the, the problem is that, like, it seems to me, uh, you know, uh, the, working on success seems so linked for so many years in, like, so many people's lives. I think for throughout all of some people's lives, you know, that it's, it's, it's hard not to see that as an important path for like feeling successful but it's a fucking load of shit it's just a job at the end of the day it gives you money to live i uh, there are very few jobs that aren't that i in my opinion i know some people that have some that they that they that they quite like but i, I know very few people who truly love their jobs just because they have to do it you know um so yeah fuck fuck work success as far as i'm concerned same yeah yeah, yeah. until you get to the point where you're like the work does itself, right? Because everyone yeah. else is doing the work and then you're living on your mega yacht. But honestly, That's it. 
I don't think that's success. I don't think so. I think that, I mean, and like, and like, it's so interesting how many of these people who have this mega success who aren't able to just sit back and kind of go, okay, great, I'm content, I'm happy. They still are, they're still striving for more, you know? Yeah. They're like, now I'm going to help all these people. Yes. Well. And make the world a better place. Well, some of them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's you know the so somebody pointed out was the like you know the 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 most notable person who has done the, you know extremely rich person who has done this is Bill Gates probably like he has pumped a significant amount of his fortune into these things uh, and uh, I would helping. argue that his wife yes has done more than him oh, oh I, I think I know I, <laughs> but I, I he was you know. obviously yeah the guy that. Started and then it all and he shoot, started it all, and, and then he has a reputation of like putting microchips in people's bloods to blood to track them. You know, it's yeah. like you can't. Yep. But anyway. Yep. But you know, yay to success! Yay, success. <laughs> big, big success, big success. <laughs> uh, three exclamation marks <laughs> potentially. Um, yeah, I, I, I suppose like. So, I mean, I had a few questions written down. You've asked most of them. I suppose at the end of the day, does it matter to you if you feel successful or not? That's a really good question. I think it used to matter. Yeah. I don't think it does anymore. I think I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a healthier way to be. And I don't know what, like, I don't know what changed that for me. Like, I can't really necessarily, I think it's just like, a bunch of little things all leading to not giving a shit or yes. maybe it's like getting to a certain age where you're just like uh, you know what the fuck ever yeah so what's this shit's dumb yeah yeah you, you think it's important yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and none of it you. none of it like very little of it really actually matters at the end of the day so true and so. i think that's a a healthier place to be in for sure mm-hmm. love it yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, do you have anything else, or shall we uh, start wrapping up? I think we can start talking about your favorite topic. Awesome. Well, just before we get off it, I mean, if anybody else has any thoughts on success and what it means to you, we'd absolutely mm-hmm. love to hear. Because I think you know, I and I, I really enjoyed this conversation, and I think it was. I'm glad we we chatted about it because it's just it's, it's a it's, great topic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if people do have thoughts on it, we would love to hear them because I think it's such an, an uh, uh, it's 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 a topic that people have such a kind of widely different opi- set of opinions on, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think uh, the definition of success is being unsuccessful. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Conversely, yeah. Uh, all right, we love it. Cool. Um. Okay, so um, we are at our favorite part of the podcast. It's better talked about. It is what's been bringing you joy. You've got some good ones this I week. I do. I have one in particular. Okay. So um, we were staying. Uh, I think they're the they're the Windward Islands. It's either the Society Islands or the Windward Islands. Okay. They're all sort of in the same area. I can't remember. So it's this island called Huahine. There's maybe six thousand people on the whole island. And we were on the water. No, this, no. It's the other island. Doesn't matter. We are on Morea, which is one of the Windward Islands. And we were staying on the water. <laughs> Sorry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm so good at telling stories. This, this is and story. it's I like, my kid, my kid, I know, right. But we had like three kayaks. So Mike had like dropped a cinder block in the water. So the kids could like tie the kayak up and just like play around in it. Uh-huh. And... It was also like there were uh, neighbors that would, you know, shuck the or uh, descale their fish because it's definitely uh-huh. an island where people like live off the ocean and live on live on the ocean and live off the ocean, um, which is another topic that I'll talk about another day because yeah. I want to start getting into uh, saving the Pacific o- Ocean and uh, absolutely this is a new mania that I might try and be successful in okay but okay so but i'm i'm i start like noticing um there are a lot of like little black tip sharks uh swimming and then it's kind of like stingray alley so we had like a group of stingrays that would you know be going 
past the house and I was like that's cool you know and like we pet stingrays and like you know it's kind of a thing uh there and there was one in particular that just kind of like swam up to us and usually like they'll check they'll sniff and see if you've got any food or you know whatever but it just it didn't want food it wanted pets it wanted uh snuggles and cuddles and lovies and so i spent it about an hour in the water just sitting there like petting the stingray and it was the coolest fucking thing it was huge it was probably i don't know like three and a half four feet wide and its tail was probably four feet so it was was one of the bigger stingrays i've seen yeah and she would just like she i was you know petting her on her nose and petting her on her back and then she would like swim away and then like think about it for a minute and then come back and just like plop herself down and like, you know, flap her, flap her, um, little stingray wings yeah. and like get settled in. And so it was like, an, it was the, I don't have moments like that where I could just like do something forever. Yeah. I could have pet her forever. If yeah. someone would have brought me food, I would have shit myself in the water <laughs> to keep petting this fucking stingray. So Harper got a little video of it, named her Glimmer Cuddles, mm-hmm. but it's just like I I felt so good connecting with this animal that I have nothing in common with, yeah. And it was just this moment of like connection, and it felt really good. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah. What do you yes, got? <laughs> uh, There's no sh- glitter cuddles. Uh, no glitter right? cuddles in my story. Um, <laughs> I, I think that, like, so I've, I've been to see a lot of movies recently, and mm-hmm. I, I saw Alien Rom- Romulus, Romulus, which is not bad, but it's, okay. it, uh, that's not what's been bringing me joy. It, it, I think I, I actually enjoyed it overall, but it had a few very, very frustrating um, callbacks to movies that just felt so unnecessary and, like, ruined scenes for me, honestly, but... Still not bad and still, like, I think better than the, like, last few Alien movies. But I went to see uh, Trap, the most recent M. Night Shyamalan movie. Oh, how was it? Oh, it was so much fun. It was just... Really? It, it... I don't think it's for everyone. It is proper trash. Like, it is gleefully trashy. And I loved that about it. It was just... I just had so much fun with it. Like, there's a point pretty early on to me, I was like oh, this movie's bullshit and it loves that it is. <laughs> and I just, I just embraced it so much. And like, I, you know, I read um, him talking about it and he was like, you know, my challenge was trying to make the antagonist the protagonist and try to find sympathy for him. And he, he kind of manages it. You're like, am I rooting for this? Like, serial killer? <laughs> yeah. Um, like Tony like, Sprano. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, that is a, a big frustration I have where it's like... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, um, they like what is it? TV's top ten greatest villains, and one of them is like Skylar White from Breaking Bad, and I'm like, all right, uh, Skylar yeah. had her problems, but she, her husband was a drug dealer. <laughs> you understand that? <laughs> oh, why? Anyway, yeah. Um, tr- but I really enjoyed Trap. It was just I. It was I. I was almost like cackling at the end of it. Like it was so ridiculous, but uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I like I I will say like I was thinking about him as a director, and I like I just like him. I just I, like. I his... think I like most of his movies because like, yeah. like all his early run, I really like. I, you know, like there's about four movies there that I really like. I know a lot of people. What is this? Is it the Village? I really enjoyed the Village. I loved the Village. I loved Unbreakable. Obviously, uh-huh. Sixth Sense. Uh-huh. I really liked Signs as well, but I feel like the waves yeah. were starting to come off a bit then, and then. In his turn, in terms of his recent stuff, I I knock at the cabin, I or is it knock at the door, whatever it is. I I cabin quite enjoyed, yeah. and I thought the old was again ridiculous yeah. and brilliant yeah. and so much yeah. fun. Yeah, same. <clears throat> so I'm excited, and and Josh Hartnett is coming oh. out of like semi retirement, yeah, and like had taken a break, I think because. He had so many stalkers that he yeah. like moved to London or something, so he's like dipping his toe back in so people don't be crazy yeah so that actors can act um but i'm just glad that like he's he's back out yeah because he's, he's uh, great yeah yeah he's, he's having so much he's having so much fun it's 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 really good yeah so, okay. It's, it's, okay. so that really brought me joy recently 
Good, because okay. it's like, we're going to do... The kids started school, so we're going to start doing day dates again. Hell yeah. And, uh, which usually starts with Bloody Mary to film. Yeah, like, you told me. I already told He's me. like, That's Alien great. Romulus? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, if I'm going to wa- not chop, waste chop, my chop. time. I guess I'm going to get... Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm so in. It's it's like, it, it's like Gwen accepting that it is kind of daft and you will love yeah. it, I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. That's um, my favorite. Yeah, so good. Uh, awesome. Okay, so um, near the end of this week's mm-hmm. episode, Beth, can you tell everyone where they can find us? You can find us at bendypodcast.com mm-hmm. and everywhere else. We're all yeah. over all the things. Everywhere. Find us everywhere. With exclamation point. Yep. Uh, th- <laughs> three at a minimum, please. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, we've come to the end of our episode properly. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat for this very important oh, bit. It's been so long. Okay. And we'd like to remind you, as always, to stay, stay Oh, a masterful one after that two weeks su- away. Would you call it successful? <laughs> Very successful. Big success. All right. We love you. Love you guys. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.